Storytell about how my best friend was a snake. So a little background information here, I'm 16 in the ninth grade, and I've been best friends with this girl who wore in a call Callie since fifth grade. Well, fast forward to eighth grade, there was this guy in my class that I really liked, and obviously I told Callie about it because, like, duh, she is my best friend. And she has never talked to this boy. She never even knew who he was before I had told her about him. And by the way, we're gonna call him Jake. Well, eventually him and I started talking, and she was hyping us up, like she really wanted us to be together so bad, and I was really feeling the love and support. Well, not long after that, I had to move to another town for like three months because of my dad. So Jake and I, we stopped talking after me being gone for like two weeks. And of course, not long after that, one of my friends from home texted me and she's like, hey, you know Callie and that guy that you were talking to, right? AKA Jake. Obviously, I say yes. So like I said, I had to move away for three months because of my dad and Jake and I, we stopped talking about two weeks after I had left. Even I get a text from my friend saying, hey, you know, Tally and my friend that you were talking to, Jake, obviously I say yes. And then she goes, oh, well, they're talking about getting together. And I was livid. I'm like, dude, I've literally been gone for like less than a month and you're already trying to get with the guy that I liked. What the actual you know what? So I bought my eyes out for like two hours straight. And then it was like that I'm going to confront her. And she literally says to me, like she has the audacity to say that she's been in love with him for so long, even before I had told her about him. Which is a lie, because I've told you guys earlier, she didn't know this man. Well, anyways, Jake and big up friends arming her, and she didn't even really apologize to me. She said sorry, but like she didn't acknowledge the importance of the situation and how it made me feel. She just thought that saying sorry would make it all better. Story time about how one of my best friends started blackmailing me. So a little after an information, I was 16 years old in a junior in high school. There were parents of friends with this other married couple who has a son that is around my age. He's 17, about to be 18, and where do they call him Derek? Well, him and I somehow ended up getting into the same friend group, and he got my number, and him and I started texting a lot. So fast forward, my birthday comes around, and I end up having a party. And some of my cousins were around my age as well, so they were there, and my whole friend group was there, including Derek, of course. Well, surprise, surprise, there were booze and there wanted there, so I ended up getting kind of messed up. And then, as you two guessed, Derek and I did the nasty. And surprise again, he had took some pictures and videos of me drinking and stuff. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he sent me a message that literally said for me to send him nude pictures and do stuff for him physically, or else he was going to send these pictures to my parents. So like I said, he took some pictures and videos of me doing some stuff for my party. And then all of a sudden, I get a message out of nowhere saying that I need to send him nude photos and do stuff for him physically or else. He was gonna send these pictures to my parents and the whole school literally blackmailed me. Now, of course, I didn't want my parents to find any of this crap out, so it became a regular thing between him and I, where I would send him pictures and then do stuff for him, and this went on for a while. Fast forward, thankfully, I'm about to graduate and he doesn't blackmail me anymore since both of us don't want a serious relationship. I don't really know how that makes sense, but yeah. Story time about how my fiance cheated on me with 10 other girls. So a little background information, I met this guy on Instagram and we're gonna call him Blaise. Now, when him and I met, he was based in Big Korea and he refused to ask me to be his girlfriend until he came home. So I waited an entire year for him to ask me to be his girlfriend, which will teach her to run a web fod, but he made it seem romantic in some twisted weird way. So God's for when he comes home in February, and he kept to his promise the first day that we met, he asked me to be his girlfriend. So I say yes, fast forward. Him and I started having a ton of arguments because of things that he was doing while he was in Korea. Fast forward, we're officially together for nine months. So fast forward, of course, he gets deployed to Europe in like September of 2022. So this made the signs that he's gonna propose to me in July and then beg me to get married to him before he leaves. Now, I may have ignored the first red fines, but I'm not dumb. Tell if that's that this man begs me to get married to him before he leaves and thank goodness I didn't because divorce papers would have been served the same day. So fast forward, he starts acting super weird. He's going out 24 seven, he's getting drunk. He's not wearing the ring that he begged me to get him. Yes, he literally begged me for a ring so that way women would know that he had a girlfriend. Well then of course I gave DM from a girl on Instagram asking if him and I were still together. And then after talking to her, I realized he literally made a Tinder two days after he got deployed. 
And what was his excuse? Oh, I wanted to meet friends to teach me German. And listen, I was not born last night, so I kept that conversation going because I wanted to get to the bottom of what the prop was actually going on. And then of course he finally comes clean that he cheated on me with a bunch of girls. But and you want to know the icing on the cake? One of them was a minor. Yup. After I leave him, he asked the audacity to ask for my wearing that. But I pretend to tell the sergeant and then I sold it for double what it was worth. So we tell Malal why my aunt put me back into foster care. Yes, she put me back into foster care. So a little background information, I was 15 years old and a sophomore in high school. But whenever I was 12 years old, I was in a very abusive household. And I had two younger sisters, one was 11 and the other one was 9. Fast forward, all of us were put into foster care. I got placed in the many shelters slash group homes because of my behavioral issues. While I was going through all of this, my sisters were both in steady homes, so that kind of sucked in me. I was happy for them, but at the same time, I was going through hell. But eventually, my grandma and my dad passed away, so my aunt decided that she wanted my sisters and I. So she got her foster license, and the days leading up to whenever we were supposed to move them with her were absolute garbage. There was this one girl who was 19 years old. Her and I did not get along, and I was supposed to leave that Wednesday, but I didn't want to wait, so I decided that I was going to get myself kicked out in hopes that I would be able to move them with my aunt sooner. So like I said, I found a way that I was going to get kicked out and it was by fighting this girl. And yes, I won. But fast forward, eventually my sisters and I moved in with my aunt. And if you guys ever heard the phrase honeymoon, you probably think of a relationship, right? Wrong. I was actually shocked about how fast everything went downhill whenever we got there. Like eventually my cousins should so be mean to me for no reason while they favored my sisters. And when I say cousin, you guys are probably thinking they're around my age. No, they were actually in their 20s. Hell, one was even close to 30. Like these were grown ass adults beating on a 15 year old. So that's really my cousins, my aunt and I are fighting almost every single day. And the one day my sister and I got into an argument that eventually turned into us fighting. And my cousins love to jump in every fight that my sister and I have. Well, they jumped in this fight and instead of helping break it up, they actually made it worse. The one was holding my leg down and eventually I got it up and I kicked her in the face. And when my aunt thought that it was my fault, sir, she sent me to foster care. Storytelling about how my boyfriend was seeking me and some other girl at the same time. So a little background information, I was 16 years old and a junior in high school and we're gonna call my boyfriend Tyler. So Tyler and I met back in middle school but we were like barely even friends. Well fast forward to my junior year in high school, he reached out to me and eventually him and I were talking every single day. So fast forward three months, him and I were definitely more than a friendship because we would do everything that couples would do just without the label. Well, the one day him and I are hanging out and we're taking pictures on his Snapchat and sending them to his friends. And then I feed that his number one best friend is this girl named Bailey. Now, the reason why I was on his best friend's list was because I didn't have Snapchat. But the only reason why this is a problem is because him and his friends Snapchat each other all day. And I'm talking like spam the farts out of each other. So for her to be at the top of his best friend list, they have to be Snapchatting a lot. So I have asked her if it was this one girl, but we both knew. Like, so like I said, he's clearly been Snapchatting this girl a lot. So then I asked her if it's this Bailey girl that we actually knew, and you was like, no, this is Bailey more. That other Bailey is disgusting. Like, as a, what the fuck is so special about this one? Just kidding, not really. She got him to play on my bed and cannot get this girl out of my head because he didn't even try to explain who she was or why she had any significance in his life at all. So fast forward to spring break. He told me that whenever we got back from vacation, he wanted me to make his pants where I was so happy while because our relationship is finally progressing. I thought I remember that he's supposed to get me his hand Tom's palm with some other girl, of course. So I decided to look up this Bailey girl just to see where she's from and what do you know, she's from his hometown. So fast forward, I ended up getting in trouble for going out and getting dragged in my pants that I found away and then we went through it. And they found out that Tyler and I were doing the nasty, so they guarded me. And they were like, using tell Tyler that he can text or call us if he wants to talk to you. I didn't get any text the whole entire time that I was grounded. So fast forward a whole week, I finally text him, like for part three. Story time about how this girl pretended to be my best friend just to go on vacation with me. So a little background information, I was 14 and a freshman in high school. And where did I call this girl Sophia? So the and I met whenever we were in 6th grade and we were inseparable. And shortly after her and I had became best friends, my mom thought that it would be nice for us to go on vacation to Hawaii in 2 years. She also said that my brother and I would be able to bring one friend each. So I asked Sophia if she wanted to come to Hawaii in 2 years and of course she said yes. Kick a mime, I was popular, Sophia was kinda lame, and I'm not even saying that just to be mean, but it's true. 
So over the next two years, her and I are hanging out every day, sneaking out together because we also live like two minutes away from each other. And my brother decided that he was gonna bring his friend Noah. And I had a crush on Noah, and Sophia knew this, but she would always fart with him in front of me. I really should have saw this as a red flag, but you know, we love to ignore those. And then out of nowhere, Sophia starts dressing like me and starts getting more popular in school. So like they said, she had been playing with this guy that she knew that I liked. And then she starts dressing like me and getting more popular which I haven't really cared because I was still her best friend. Maybe they said she didn't really have any other friends, so fast forward, vacation comes around, and we all go to Hawaii, we had the best time ever. And then we saw her, and I barely hear from her, but I was putting in all the effort, texting her every day, and her responses were dry as fuck. And then she had this boyfriend named Brandon, which I guess that could have been the reason why she wasn't targeting me as much. Because you know, you give into your relationship, and all of your focus goes towards that, especially at this age. But the only reason why she started dating him was because he was popular, so they break up and she stopped talking to me altogether. She even blocked me on Instagram. So I asked her what happened and she said that I was a controlling bitch and she didn't want to be friends with me, which doesn't even make any sense because I'd never been controlling to her. And then she started texting me like everything was okay and this went on for a little bit. But after a few months, I just stopped talking to her, but I definitely felt used. Story time about my toxic ex-best friend. So a little bit from information, I had a very close guy friend who were really called Max. Now, Max was two years older than me, but due to our families being super close, him and I became best friends. Growing up, I saw him as kind of an older brother. And then eventually, as we grew up, I saw him as my best friend. Until I realized that he was actually a terrible person. And I missed all of his names. That he was not a real friend. Like one, our first fight, I told him something that I didn't want anybody else knowing. And what do you know, right after I tell him, my family knows, his family knows, my crush knows, all of our friends know. Um, I feel just like probably should have distanced myself, but he apologized and maybe he brems again. That was sign number one. Sign number two, his huge change in attitude. One second, he would be extremely weird to me, and then he would meet us really sweet and care and die, and his apologies were the best. So it was really hard not to forgive him. He was like a master manipulator. Number three, we only talked whenever it was convenient for him. Like seriously, we would never talk unless he needed something. I think we left off on sign number three, which was the only time that Lee would talk was what it was convenient for him. He would never reach out, which left me being the one who was constantly trying to preserve our friendship or whatever was left of it. Like all of our messages were literally me and it made me seem really needy. And like I was putting in way too much effort because he would literally answer was the most simple messages. I'm like, yeah, okay. Sure. And he would only talk to me whenever he was with his friends. Sign number four. It felt like he was embarrassed of me. Now, I know that I was two years younger than him, but we were so friends, and I really don't think that's that much of a difference. Like, he would never want to be seen with me. The last sign, he would literally always talk about Leva Harma Bath. And I thought this was just rumors at first, until finally several people told me that it was not a rumor. He would say things like, oh, she's ugly, she's so mature, she's annoying and childish, she's so annoying. And then I finally decided to cut him off. Because if the bad outweighed the good, was it really worth keeping that person in my life? Story time about how I unintentionally almost drowned my sister. So a little background information, I was eight years old and my sister was five. And during the summer, my sister and I never really got to go swimming because pool memberships were really expensive and my family did not want to take us to a public pool. So every summer we would go to my grandpa's house so that way we could go swimming. But he lived like two hours away so we would only go there once a summer. And since we only got to go swimming this one time, we would usually be in the pool 24-7. So fast forward, we're all at my grandpa's house. And I finished my dinner first, so I went outside and I put my sister's floaties on because I'm pretty sure that mine actually popped. A quick thing, we were allowed to go into the pool without floaties on if we stayed in the shallow end of the pool because we couldn't swim for shit. Anyway, so I put her floaties on and I darted the geek bend and she comes outside like about out of hell and she starts screaming and crying. And being the big sister I am, I'm just swimming around ignoring her enjoying my time in the pool. Like I said, I have her floaties on, I'm in the deep end of the pool, she's screaming at me, telling me to take them off, I'm ignoring her. And then what does her crazy ass decide to do? She decides to get into the pool and try and get them from me. Now my sister was super tiny, and even being in the shallow end of the pool, she really couldn't stick her head above the water. I'm pretty sure that all swimming pools are like this, but there's a slope that goes into the deep end and it's super slippery so she comes over to try and get this floaties from me and then she slips it was literally like a cartoon where the cartoon characters are moving their feet backwards really fast and i thought that she was just jolting around so i'm just sitting there staring at her until she actually starts choking and then my dad hurries up and runs outside thank god i feel like dads just have superpowers to know whenever their kids are in trouble 
Anyway, so he jumps in with the pool and he saves her. He ends up spraining his ankle and I wasn't allowed in the pool for the rest of the weekend. Now, of course, this had me pretty pissed off, but now that I'm an adult, I can see why. Story come about why I hate Valentine's Day. So a little background information, I was 22 years old and I had been dating this guy for almost a year. And we're gonna call him Jimmy. Most of the Jimmy and Matt's relationship have been long distance because literally after two months of less saving, he was offered a job in a different state. And I never worried about him cheating on me or anything like that because he seemed like a really honest and genuine guy. But of course I was wrong because he probably couldn't do anything for Valentine's Day because he had to work. So me, I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm just gonna fly to him, you know, so we can spend Valentine's Day together. And it'll be in my surprise. So a few days before Valentine's Day, I get my plane ticket and I wanted to do something special. So I wore some nice lingerie under a trench pillow. Well, fast forward, my thing lands and I get an Uber to his apartment. And when I knock on his door, I hear a woman's voice from inside say, don't worry, I'll do the door. So like I said, I Uber to his apartment and I knock on the door and I hear some woman from inside say, don't worry, babe, I'll get it. So I hurry up and try to tie my coat because I'd untied it thinking that my boyfriend was gonna open the door. But no, why would my boyfriend open his own door to his own apartment that he lives alone in? So she opens the door and she's like, hi, what can I help you with? And I'm like, oh, is this apartment blah, blah, blah. And she's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, well, is Jimmy here? And she was like, yeah. So she calls Jimmy over to the door. I look directly at him and I'm like, oh, is this like your friend or something? And she's like, excuse me, I'm his fiance. So I'm looking at him all oh, confused and I start screaming that he's a liar, a cheater, but babe, go call the police. I have no idea who this woman is. She sounds crazy. Whose fiance walks away. He goes, I'm sorry, I'll call you later. And the security escorts me off the property. Needless to say, I never talk to him ever again. Story time about why you just can't bring some friends around your boyfriend. So a little background information, I'm a 17 and a junior in high school, and I have been best friends with this one girl who we're gonna call Lily for about two years. Now Lily and I weren't your ordinary best friends. We were the ones that would party together, but we would never talk about anything serious. And when I mean serious things, I mean like a secret that you don't want anybody to know. Just for a little example, the one time I told her that I thought I was pregnant, and clearly she knew that I was super scared, and I told her I don't want anybody to know, please don't say anything. Um, yeah, in about 30 minutes, I have like 20 people asking me if I was pregnant, and then somehow my parents found out. She's also the best friend that you keep away from any dad that you like. Well, I went to dating this guy who worked like for Jared for six months, and obviously now that I have a boyfriend, I've stopped hanging out with her as much. But my whole thing is she would never give me a heads up on plans. She would literally just text me and be like, hey, we're going out tonight. But I would touch her back and I would be like, sorry, I can't. I already have plans with Jared. So this made her really upset. So like I said, she was getting very upset with the fact that she would ask me to make plans last minute and I would tell her that I'm busy with my boyfriend. And this went on throughout Jared and I's whole relationship. But it wasn't like I would ignore her. I would still hang out with her. I just wouldn't go and party and stuff like that because I respected my relationship. She would also always ask me to not bring my boyfriend to these parties. And that's another reason why I wouldn't go. So the one night she's like, listen, you know, come out with me, you can bring your boyfriend, it won't be a problem. Which was a shocker, so I was a little bit skeptical, but I said okay. So we go to this party, and usually whenever I'm with Lily, I get really messed up, and I was trying to pace myself this night. And then she's like, come on, you don't mind if she gets drunk, right, Jared? Of course, him wanting me to have fun, he said no, he doesn't mind. She calls us a new word, and then she asked for my boyfriend's Snapchat just so that when she could check up on us because I was too drunk. The entire ride home, Lily is blowing up Jared's phone, and we just think that she's trying to check on us. Um, no. Instead, when we got home, he opened his phone, and it was actually Lily sending him a bunch of naked pictures. Story came about why my sister is probably worse than yours. So let him I find information, my sister and I were both 16 and in our sophomore year of high school. And yes, my sister and I were twins, but we were the complete opposite. She was the girly girl, and I was a tomboy. But the summer before our sophomore year, we both got grounded because we were driving my dad's car without our license and we wrecked it. So we ended up summing all summer together, which was very unusual because it was like her and I were acquaintances living in the same house. Well, over that summer, we got super close and she ended up turning me into a girly girl. She taught me how to take care of my skin, do my hair, do my makeup, and how I dress. Now, mind you, once we got into high school, she never spoke to me because that wasn't a part of the little clique that she was in. 
So she was like, yay, you can finally hang out with my friends and I am super excited. So school starts, I end up becoming friends with all of her friends and my sister's really good friends with this one boy. But she had only said that she never liked him like that. So she had abused us, him and I started talking and we both ended up liking each other. So like I said, my sister and I start school, I become friends with her friends and she introduces me to this guy that she's been best friends with for a while. Him and I end up talking, I really like him, he really likes me. And my sister would always hype me up to be like, oh my god, he should get with him, he's a, such a nice guy, and you guys would look so great together. So the one week he asked me if I wanted to go on a date with him, and of course I said yes, so I ran to my sister's room, I was so excited to tell her. So I don't um her door, I go in and I'm like, oh my gosh, guess what? She's like, what? I'm like, he asked me out on a date, and she just sits and stares at me. And when I ask her what's wrong, she's like, oh my god, you knew that I liked him. You're such a bad sister. I would have never done this to you. So then I started to feel bad, but then I didn't because I remembered how she used to hype me up. So the next day, a few hours before my date, she comes in my room. She's like, hey, I'm really sorry about how I acted yesterday. I would love to help you get ready for your date if you'll let me. I feel so bad. And with sister, so of course I get over it. And I tell her, yes, I want her to help me. Like for part three. Storytell about how my sister sold my nudes. Yes, my own sister. So a little background information, I was in 12th grade and I was pretty popular. And my sister on the other hand, she was in 9th grade. Not even saying this to boost my ego, but she was jealous of me and everybody could tell. Maybe because of the fact that she didn't have her high school glow up, you know, she low-key still looked like a 6th grader. And there were very few guys who gave her attention and some of the guys would even tell her that I was hotter than her. But that did not help the situation at all. For a week I even paid attention to any of these guys because I had a boyfriend. And my sister and I still shared a room even though our brothers got their own rooms. So she could literally go through my shit anytime she wanted. Well since we shared a room and I never thought that she would sell my nudes. Prince I would take these exposing pictures of myself while she was in the room. Well, she had this one friend named Jessica who also was weirdly obsessed with me. I think she was saying how funny it would be to sell someone's nudes. So like I said, my sister had this friend and the one day they were trying to about how funny it would be to sell somebody's pics. We all laughed, joked about it, the conversation was over and done with, I thought that was it. Like in all honesty, I thought it was one of those things where you guys make plans to do something and then after the conversation you never cop about it again and you never actually do it. You said you were going to do because it was so out of pocket. So my sister's friend slept over that night and I looked up, went to school earlier because I have volunteer work to do so my sister usually just takes the bus. Well, I accidentally left my computer at school so I called my sister, asked her if she could grab it and bring it into school. Now, my computer is connected to my phone. Well, I guess they decided to be little creeps and they went on my computer and they found my pictures and they sent them to themselves. And since I found a computer or hooked up, I was able to see that they sent the pictures to themselves. So I start glowing up her phone, but by first period, I had a bunch of people telling me that they were about to buy my pictures. My sister literally made an ad and put it on Snapchat. My boyfriend broke up with me and I never talked to her. 